One thing that I think has and will continue to truly change the trajectory of the NBA at large is what we mentioned at the top. The like full absolute wrapping their arms around gambling that's been going on pretty much since the very beginning of Adam Silver's tenure taking over as commissioner back in 2014. I remember those very early quotes. I forget exactly where they were, when they were, and who they should be attributed to. So apologies to whatever outlet. I mean, he said it in a press conference, but Silver took everyone and put them on full blast when he said something to the effect of like, the NBA needs to figure out ways to monetize our, like ourselves off of all this stuff. And if you're listening to this show, you're probably very, very familiar with how all this has unfolded over the last four to five years, right? State by state, gambling became more and more legalized. There was the whole battle between, you know, the all these apps and websites about are they games of skill versus chance and what have you. But now we're pretty at the future. Like if if the flying cars and we'll have watches and have holograms on our on our wrists was like what everyone always expected the future to be like put that in gambling like we actually have arrived there mike Vorkanov of the athletic friend of the show i don't know if he's a friend of yours friend of mine i like him uh, enough he's a, he's a nice guy shout out vork who reported at the athletic i believe it was he for that's how i first saw it on tuesday that the nba is going to be infusing gambling directly into the league pass app that still doesn't work half the time that I use it in my apartment. So that's a whole nother podcast to complain about that. But then you have Cavs coach JB Bickerstaff telling reporters that he's had his phone number procured by gamblers who send him threatening crazy messages to use a direct quote about where he and his kids live. And Tyrese Halliburton is saying that he feels like a prop because half the world just looks at him as someone who can make them money on DraftKings or FanDuel or what have you. Spo said it's contradictory, that it's trends that it treads on a weird line. They had an incident with Victor Oladipo last year where someone was screaming at him and security had to take him away. I get the like over under fun and oh bad beats on svp at the end of the night on like that type of stuff has always kind of been like i get it get betting the line and guessing that and of course there's been stuff dating back to shoeless joe jackson about how you know there's always going to be some type of opportunity for someone to do something funny but the fact that we're getting so granular with all this stuff and that you can It'll, if it's in the app and like someone, and I'll, I'll tell you what, all these players are on their phones at halftime. That's something that I'm not just talking about that from a gambling perspective. I'm, I've am i been so surprised. Maybe I said this on the show. I don't, I don't recall. I've been so surprised going in the locker rooms pregame and postgame now just to see how many people are just, how many people, how many players are just sitting in their chair, hunched over, nose buried in their screen. And from all the coaches that I know, they do it at halftime too. And it used to be like, it used to be like a sanctuary. Like you go into the locker room, you're here, you're plugged in. These kids are all scrolling on social. They've got seven different people messaging them things they got to do better in the first half. There's plenty of opportunity for, you know, this to wade into this gambling conversation that we're having now. So I'm going to stop talking. Dan, I'm going to pitch it over to you. I don't know. What? What's your first thought on all this stuff? Yeah, I mean, my first thought is that when you you talk about Adam Silver being sort of clear at the beginning of his tenure that this is like everybody else is kind of making money off this. We need to make money off it. There is a large pool of money out there and we need to be accessing it and maximizing it. You know, you pay your money and you take your chances. And this is the kind of stuff that can come from it. Like, you're absolutely right to know this is not acknowledging the relationship between professional sports or between sports in general and gambling on sports, like pretending it didn't exist, it doesn't exist or never existed would be ridiculous. Like, but it, there's, I think there's probably a difference in degree, at least if not kind from Brent Musburger at the end of a game saying like, or Al Michaels saying like, and some interested parties are watching this kick 
uh, as opposed to like it's it is in front of your face constantly. And now with the new partnership the NBA is pursuing, able to make two clicks in your app to get your account that is you know could, you know connected to your credit card to uh, you know to make a you know, to make a bet and like. We are to some degree related to this or complicit in this, right? Like Yahoo has a sports book at the Venetian in Vegas. Like uh, the podcasts that go that are that are have you know we have. So uh, I don't know about about in terms of our programmatic ads, but like you cannot listen to a sports podcast without hearing some kind of read for or some kind of promotion for uh, a, a sports book or a gambling app or some other side of sort of wagering concern. The money that comes from that is fueling tons of these relationships, right? It's uh, with, you know for, uh, across major shops, and so w- if you work for that, you work for one of those places, and you take a check from one of those places, you are to some degree complicit in it, and can't pretend that that's not true. And I can't pretend I love that. Um, I tried not to do a whole hell of a lot of like wagering related stuff in my work, but like. We have people who do that at a really high level here. And so it makes every, all of this feel more, comp, you know, not complicated as kind of a cop out. It makes it feel a little bit gross and it makes you feel like uh, the, the level of concern of like as J.B. Bickerstaff is talking about, as Tyrese Halliburton is talking about, Eric Spolster, the people that you mentioned, like there's not a, a large gap or a, a big, bright dividing line or a high wall between somebody who is aggrieved in this way and the people who are playing these games or coaching these games or on the staffs of the teams. Like I am very, I get, I mean, I'm getting nervous about a lot of things. I'm a nervous person, but like when you, you, you know, we used to see like fans run on the court to go high five LeBron or whatever. Like, yeah. what if, what if that guy was pissed off that he didn't hit his same game parlay and something real bad could happen with that, right? Like I I have concerns about stuff like that. Maybe that's, you know, you might consider that pearl clutching. You might consider that sort of like worst case scenario thinking maybe, but it feels like the degree to which everybody has sort of fully embraced the money of this uh, and what with, uh, you know, and like gotten on board for whatever consequences might be coming down the pike for it because it's worth the dollar today like that. Yeah, I, I, I have I have some concerns about that and I don't feel particularly great about it. I also yeah. don't have a particularly great answer for it unless somebody uh, completely moral and independently wealthy wants to fund all of our operations. So, well, I'm uh, reading you know, this we'll book called there. The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt all about moral psychology. So once I'm finished, I will definitely have the answer for you. Yes. But no, I, I don't I don't think it's pearl clutching because like in college basketball right now, the high school group chat that people, listeners are familiar with, the Philly boys, a lot of them went to Temple. They've been laughing about how Temple has this point shaving scandal and now they're doing well in March Madness, blah, blah, blah. It's not basketball, but the biggest star in baseball, Shohei Otani's interpreter is, I mean, I only... I don't want to digress too much, but like, if you haven't heard about that, go look into the four and a half million dollars that are in question about... I mean, that could happen with anyone here. And the conspiracy theories flying around about what could be the reality there of is this interpreter just like taking the fall for whatever. So to me, if you want to just like try to just not complain and like narrow in exactly what the issue is here, to me, it's the, the minute to minute, second to second live betting stuff that. I think is like the yuckiest part about it that the league is clearly steering into with this league pass addition that I think from my vantage point is the scariest, weirdest, and probably mo- has the like the damage for or the, the, the danger for the most damage. Going back to that halftime stuff I was referring to, even just like you could go back on the bench, like Spo was talking about with Victor Oladipo, or I'm sure even, you know, it's happened across the league. You go back to the bench, if you're a star or whatever, starter, someone who who, come, who typically sits the start of the fourth quarter until that first TV timeout, you're coming back in like the nine-minute mark of the fourth, and that whole time on the bench, someone behind you is talking about how you are a rebound away from this line 
or like you're a point re- what and you know these some of these some players will be happy to like oh that's a joke like Shea Gildas Alexander chasing that thirty point whatever not not to call out Shea I'm saying that type of thing could happen just like guys chase triple doubles and chase oh this is my fifth thirty point triple double night like that type of stuff I mean especially if they're somewhat like you talked about Memphis losing all these games, like a, a team that has a bunch of 10 day guys on it that are just trying to make their livelihood happen. Like you could pretty quickly make some funky stuff go down. So that to me, it's the live stuff. And like the fact that it will be in the arena happening, like it's very different than like a future bet on who's going to win rookie of the year or who's going to win a division, who's going to make the conference, that type of stuff. That type, like when it is chancy things, when it is just like a true gamble, that to me is different than the minute to minute live updating. Oh, like when I was in Denver, uh, what was it to that, that Monday? So like a week and a half ago when they were down 22 at the half to Toronto, whenever it was, Adam Mara, shout out Adam, turned to me and said, hey, Denver's plus 100 right now to win this game. Like, it's a pretty good bet, right? And not to blame that, I was like, yeah, like, honestly, if I was a betting man, take that. Like, they're going to win this game. Like, to me, that is so much different that, like, that's just like a fun, can Denver overcome a 22-point deficit than, like, all these nitty-gritty live update things that are even, like, individual player-controlled as opposed to, or even like the line for the half, as opposed to just like, will this team win? Will this guy get this award? That's to me a little bit of a line of demarcation that I'm thinking about and feeling. Yeah, I don't, I will be perfectly honest with you. Like I, it's not my, I have plenty of vices and we can talk about them as much as you want, but this is Give not one. one of them. Give me one. Uh, oh, I like to drink a lot. Uh, I like to, <laughs> I, I used to smoke cigarettes. I don't do it anymore. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I eat too much. Uh, I don't sleep very well. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we could talk about a lot of things. Um, yeah. Like this is, it's not my area of expertise. Let's put it that way. Um, so I, as far as like slicing up what is a better version of this, a worse version of it, a, uh, you know, a more healthy relation. I, I don't know. I, I, the, I wouldn't be speaking from any kind of, you know, information there. It, the potential downsides of it seem pretty dangerous to me. Um, the parties involved here have just looked up, looked at all of it and said the upside of what we can make off of this and capitalize on the interest in it is worth that. And it's worth it to, it's worth our while. It's worth it to the bottom line. It's worth it to the, you know, increasing basketball related income that goes that, you know, grows the pie of the league and gets everybody paid more. It's worth it. And then you know on the media side as well, you know, the it's worth it to all of us for this to get as big as it can. And a lot of times a mindset of let's make this as big as it can uh, winds up leaving some people by the wayside in, in pretty dire straits. So We'll see. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I look at this and I think like this is going to something bad is going to happen here. But uh, I guess, like, as I said earlier, maybe I think like that too much about everything. 